Hey guys, this is Andrea. Welcome back to the channel. So guys, let's dive in. This is Disability and Organization. And there is some other creators that I'll make a shout out to in the video that have got some excellent tips on physical disabilities of how to stay organized and on track and things like that. But this is more for psychosocial disabilities, chronic illness and mental illness, guys. So in Australia, um, psychosocial disabilities are on the NDIS and they can be a bit nebulous in defining them because to get on the NDIS you have to have a diagnosis and that can be a bit tricky but it's now moving towards how the disabilities affect you on the life, not the label. So I'm talking ADHD, if you have epilepsy severe enough that it affects your day-to-day -day living, brain injuries, MS, uh, ALL, uh, all the neurological conditions that would be considered disabling enough to be a disability. And so there are some assistive tech options and you would think that, hang on, wouldn't there be wouldn't this just be the same as someone at work or their normal life using a phone, using a notebook, using a diary? Yes, but there are some other things that people with a disability, with an NDIS package, especially if you're plan managed or self managed, need to think about on an NDIS level. That's paying your support workers, so invoicing. How do the support workers get paid? and organising care, as well as organising all of your reports, medical records, assessments, type of things. So as I mentioned previously, it might be good old pen and paper in a diary, it might be a electronic calendar that can send out to your care team as well. This also goes into disability and privacy, so that's the thing that can be, you really need to know how they're handling that information. If you are a private person, it might not be the best idea. Um, the diary as well, great option. Then you get into the assistive tech titles of things. Um, I've done a video, or it's coming guys, on assistive tech and how to apply for it as well. So things like a laptop, a smartphone that are linked up to Amazon or Alexa type of things that you can put reminders in, you could be listening to podcasts type of thing. But just be aware of that, that your internet is considered an everyday living expense as well. So that gets into the grey area of internet for high functioning people is considered a everyday living expense. If it's connected up to like alarms and stuff like that, there might be a portion paid. Again, check with your care team, support coordinators, support plan managers. I have found since the beginning um, plan managers have been really, really great. Um, as well so and the particular organization I'm with I don't actually have to chase you can just literally snap a photo on your f smartphone send it through to their invoicing email if you need an approval letter send the approval letter through to them it's paid within I think four to six weeks um, guys and this is the other one is keeping on track whether your care organisation is on top of their invoicing. Um, how far do they let it get behind? So do they have an accounts team? Do they have a bookkeeper as well? So these are things that the mental load of a person with a disability have to carry and their care team as well. And generally in this side of things, it is their informal support, so that's their family and friends, might be prompting them as well because this is something that gets into that grey area of 
is it your responsibility as a support work coordinator's cohort responsibility? Is it a support coordinator's responsibility? So these are the questions that you got need to ask and understand. Because I said in the previous video, getting everything in writing. But then it's useless if you can't go back to that information and find that information. So keeping organised is critical. I actually have a full on filing cabinet that's got all of my information organised in it. Um, once a month to I file everything and then put it back in. Once a year at tax time I go through, archive things and bin, shred, anything I don't need as well. Um, this is the thing, if I'm using a support worker to do that, are they going to handle that information in a sensitive way? Or are they going to be tempted to read the reports and stuff like that because, oh, they didn't know this or they didn't know that or whatever. You might want to keep that information confidential. Um, there might be very valid reasons for that as well. So when you're doing an intake with a agency, you can have a right to refuse that information, but just realise it's going to impact on your care as well. Um, but are they going to read the reports? Because a care agency will have a file on your development. Guys, that's what their note keeping is for. It's for records as well. For protection of them, if someone would to come back and say, hey, this hasn't or has happened, and people need to act on it um, as well. So guys, just be aware of that. And guys, I'm losing massive amounts of focus. So please like, share and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.